This is where things get interesting. In this episode, we're going to be using our ESP32 to communicate over the Wi-Fi to our Raspberry Pi server using the MQTT protocol. This is the project that we put together in episode 10, so make sure you go check that out if you wanna build your own. This here has multiple inputs from various sensors, as well as the ability to use relays on the outputs. This is the code we're gonna be starting with, and it should look familiar to you because I do cover it in other episodes in the series. But essentially what it's doing is it's gathering information from the three sensors. We have two BME 280s and we have one DHT22. So we just gotta make sure that we can firstly gather the information from these sensors before we can start doing the next steps, which is actually sending that information across to our server. Let's put this code onto our ESP32 and see what we get as an output. We can see the readings are coming through fine, so we can move on to the next part. Let's connect to the Wi-Fi. To connect to the Wi-Fi, you first need to add the Wi-Fi library, which we're doing with this command over here. To make things easier for yourself as well, we're going to be adding two constants, one for the SSID of your Wi-Fi and one for the password of your Wi-Fi. And this will be added near the top of your code so that if ever it changes, you can just come here, make one change here, and it will affect the rest of the code. Let's move to the setup function and have a look at how we connect to the Wi-Fi. I've made it a little bit easier for yourselves by adding a comment at the beginning and at the end of the connection to the Wi-Fi code. And we're going to put this onto our ESP32 and see what we get. The main bit of code here is this Wi-Fi.begin. That's what's connecting to the SSID using the password you provided earlier. So we can see that it's connected successfully and this is the IP address that's been assigned to it by my router. Let's set up MQTT. To get MQTT working with the ESP32, we need to install the ESP MQTT library. To do that, go to Tools, Manage Libraries and do a search for ESP MQTT. And it should be the only result that comes back. Make sure that's installed. It's by Patrick Lapointe and uh, I have the latest version, version 1.8. And this is the library we'll be using to send and receive data from MQTT. We need to include the PubSub client library. We also need to create a variable called MQTT server and assign it with the IP address of your Raspberry Pi server that you would have created in a previous episode during the series. We're then creating a Wi-Fi client called ESP client, which we'll be referencing over here where we are creating a pub sub client. Then we need to create these variables, which is basically the topics of the information that we're gonna be sending via MQTT. I discussed this on the episode that I did where I introduced you to MQTT and what a topic actually is. And back down to the setup area where we're going to connect to the server. So you need these two lines here. This one here is setting what the server actually is. This is the MQTT server we created earlier. And this is the port number. If you've changed your default port number, make sure that you change it over here as well. And then we're gonna connect. This here is just the name of the device that we're connecting from. I'm calling this Grow 10 Controller, but you can call it pretty much anything you want. Let's head down to the loop section where we're going to be actually publishing to the MQTT topics we created earlier. So these are the variables we created earlier that we assigned the topics to, and we're gonna be writing the values that we got from our various sensors. We're gonna be converting them to a string, and we're gonna be writing them to these topics. So let's put this onto our ESP32 and see what we get. Now that the code is on the ESP32, you're not gonna see anything significantly different over here. Uh, if you have a look inside the monitor, you'll see it's showing the same stuff we saw before. And where we're really gonna see the difference is when we go to node red. So let's switch over to there and we'll see what's going on. So let's get rid of these test nodes that we created in the last episode. We don't need them anymore. And let's start doing some interesting things with our MQTT data. First thing we're gonna do is scroll all the way down till you see network and you can see MQTT in. So let's just use one of them for now. We're gonna be adding a few more in just a little while. 
Then let's add a debug node because that'll allow us to see the data that's coming in. And that's all we want to do right now, but we will do something a little bit more interesting with this in a bit. So here we go. We've got that connected up, MQTT going into the debug message payload. Let's go into MQTT. And firstly, we need to add the new MQTT broker. So if we click on the pen icon, we're able to give it a name. So we'll just call it MQTT broker, very original. And if node red is on the same server as your MQTT broker, then it's just gonna be localhost, port is 1883. You can enable SSL if you want, uh, that will make it more secure, but I'm not gonna do that. This is all behind my firewall. I'm not exposing this to the internet at this point. And that's pretty much it, I'll add it. And now what we need to do is add our topic. So let's go have a look and see what we called one of our topics. We'll do the first one here, grow shed slash temp one. Just copy that and we'll put that into the topic and pretty much done. So there we go. Let's deploy this. Let's have a look in the debug area and see what we have. There we go. We have the temperature being sent across as 23.59 degrees Celsius at the moment. And that's going to send across every five seconds because of the delay that we've set in this. So we see there five seconds delay and then it's going to run the loop again and publish these MQTT topics. So let's add the other topics and we'll see what that looks like as well. And there we have it. The MQTT topics are all coming through to this debug node and it's displaying on the side over here. Now in the next episode, we're gonna do a bit more interesting things than just sending it off to a debug node. But in this episode, before we finish up, I just wanna change one last thing inside our code. And that is to help it with reconnections. Sometimes you lose connection with your MQTT broker and it's good to check whether you are actually connected. And if you want, then to do a few things to make sure that you reconnect. And if you can't reconnect, then restart your system. So to do that, I've created a function over here called reconnect. And we'll come back to that in just a second. The first thing we need to do is go up to your setup and we're going to delete the grow tent controller connection over here because we don't need it. It's gonna be used down below in the function. So that's gone. If we come down to this function, reconnect, we can see what it's doing. Firstly, it's creating a variable called counter, and that counter is going to increment by one during this while loop. A while loop is basically do everything within this loop, everything that starts between there and there, you need that to run until the client is actually connected. That exclamation point is saying, if not client connected, then continue doing this while loop. So inside the while loop, what we have here is it's checking if the counter has reached five. If it has, then reboot. That means that it was unsuccessful in connecting after five retries. So we're going to restart the ESP32. This is where it's incrementing. This is just printing out some text. Over here is where it's actually trying to reconnect. So over here, it's saying if, and it's saying client connect. So that's the code we took out from the setup area at the top. Don't need that semicolon over there. And here it's saying it's connected. Otherwise, it's going to say it's failed and it's going to say why it's failed. So if you are looking in the serial monitor, you can actually see that message. And then it's waiting five seconds before trying it again. To call that reconnect, we're going to do it right at the top here. And we're going to say if client.connected. So we're checking is the client connected? If it isn't connected, because we've got the exclamation mark, then we want to call the function reconnect. So let me just make sure I've spelled that correct. Yep, reconnect, and that's gonna run over there. And that reconnect, so when we first run this code, it's gonna go into the loop, it's gonna see that the client isn't connected because we haven't connected to it yet. It's gonna go into the reconnect function. It's gonna run this. It's gonna connect to the client over here. If it connects successfully, then it'll continue with the code. And the next time the loop runs after five seconds down here, it's going to again check is the client connected. 
most likely it will be. So it'll skip this and it'll go straight through to the getting the values and it's going to publish to the MQTT. So that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and the next one will come very, very soon. We'll show you some cool things that we can do with the data that has been received by Node-RED and MQTT. Until the next episode, stay safe and stay spicy.